Increasing government debt leads to higher household net worth. This is just a fact. You might not like hearing it. I know I'm a conservative. I don't like hearing either. But the facts are the facts, man. And I like to deal with facts. That's why I like data. I like data. Because if my data is to tell me one thing and I go the other thing, I'm going against data. And data says what I'm telling you right now. It's just a fact. So we're going to start here. I'm going to show you on my Facebook page. I came across something today from a visual capitalist, which I like. So you see, this is uh, my man who I just interviewed the other day. He's playing a show up in New Jersey. And I said, man, if you play uh, Better Days, I'll come and check it out. My man, uh, Jeff Altieri from the band Enrage. I'm a big fan of. So here's Japan. Debt to GDP almost doubled from night from the year 2000 to 2024 debt to gdp in japan almost doubled debt to gdp in singapore more than doubled debt to gdp in the u.s almost yeah, about tripled debt to gdp in the uk tripled greece france portugal spain slovenia uh, finland croatia canada canada now has 100 percent debt to gdp Belgium has 100% debt to GDP. Only thing it went, only time debt to GDP actually went down was in Belgium, Israel, and Iceland. Everything else, the debt to GDP went up. The, why do I point that out? It's because everybody's in debt. Everyone's like, everyone, the U.S. is so heavy in debt. Everybody's in debt. There's no country that is in positive surplus. It just isn't, man. I mean, everybody's in debt. As debt is as far as the eye can see. The whole world's a float in debt. And people freak out about that. So then I, I went on the thread right here. I said, let's take a look at household net worth is in blue. Federal debt, this is total public debt, is in red. And we're going to go back to 1989, which is far back as household net worth goes. Even the federal debt goes back further. But I just want to uh, go as make it even, Stephen. And interestingly enough, this is kind of the same scale. It goes by $4 trillion to $36 trillion for federal debt, which is a factor of nine. $20 trillion to $180 trillion, which is a factor of nine as well. So they're both kind of on the same scale in some ways. You see, you know, 20 to 40 is a 100% increase. 40 to 80 is a 100% increase. 4 to 8 is a 100% increase. 8 to 16 is a 100% increase. So basically the same scale. So what you're going to see here, in 1989, the federal debt was $2.837 trillion. $2.837 trillion. Fast forward till today, the federal debt is about $33 trillion at the end of 2023. Net worth, though, is $20 trillion. Fast forward till today, and net worth is... $142 trillion. This crossing over is meaningless it's just because they're not the same. It's not the same scales in terms of actual dollars. What that means is we are the household debt grew by uh, for $122 trillion from 1989 till today, till the end of 2023. $122 trillion. Federal debt grew by $30, uh, $30 trillion. Essentially, what that means is for every $1 in federal debt, Household net worth increased by four dollars. That's just a fact, dude. You you can cannot argue with this. This is just a fact. It's just one hundred percent a fact. All right. So what we say here is just okay. Well, let's take a look at this graph. We say this is federal debt to GDP down here, and household net worth to GDP up here. And this is from my man Richard Vague's uh, "The Truth About Government Debt," and here's a book I'll share with you in just a second. And what you're going to see here, again, we're going to go, here's federal government. Oh, actually, I want to go down here. This guy right here. Yep. Federal uh, household net worth is in black. Federal government debt is in this dark gray. And what you're going to see is we've, since 1950, the federal government has been running deficits every single year. Every single year. They're never paying off the debt. That's 72 <laughs> years they've been running deficits. Like just like right there in 1974, I had to think that a balanced budget. Pablo. I think one year in the Clinton years when the Republicans were in the House and in the Senate, they had a balanced budget. That's it. But watch this. So it's negative 100% is where we are now. See that big drop in debt to GDP? Coincides with a big increase in net worth. Drop, jump. So watch what happens here. The federal debt to GDP is going up, which means we're, we're basically not taking on as much debt, not taking on as much debt, not taking as much debt. What's happening to net net worth on the households? It's dropping. The the debt is is not taking as much debt, so the debt is decreasing. The household net worth is dropping. The debt is increasing, starting with Ronald Reagan, and the household net worth is increasing. I mean, these are the data sets. Every dollar of government debt has led to a four dollar increase in net worth. This is just a fact. I know it's painful. You're like, no, I don't want government debt. 
It's just a fact. Check this out. 2019 total net worth of the U.S. economy, U.S. households, was $116 trillion. All right, right there. $120 yeah, trillion. $116 trillion. In 2020, it was $131 trillion. It grew by $15 trillion in 2020. How much did the debt grow in 2020? So we're going to look. Uh, right there, the debt was twenty-two and a half, basically tw let's say twenty-three trillion dollars in nineteen uh, twenty nineteen. It was now twenty-six trillion dollars in uh, twenty twenty. The federal debt grew by three trillion dollars, and yet the household net worth right uh, right there. Uh, this one I want to say right here, twenty twenty to twenty twenty one. That's when it started kicking off. So the household debt, the, the household net worth was one hundred thirteen trillion dollars in twenty twenty. Then after all the crazy spending. It went to $135 trillion. It grew by, I don't know what that is, 20, $23 trillion. Where, household, where the total federal government debt was $26 trillion, it went to $28 trillion. I mean, the federal government debt, has, when it grows, the household net worth grows too. It's just a fact. You cannot argue this right here. You can't. I mean, you can argue it, but you're wrong. I think there's another one right here. Yeah, right here. So, figured U.S. net income by macro sector, again, the dark black is going to be the federal government. In this case, the federal government. Households are right there in the light gray. I don't know why I switched the colors on this, but weird. So this is the federal government. Watch. As the household, as the federal government net income drops, i.e. either taking on debt, the, the household net income inc improves. I mean, it's, it's literally, look at this. Drop in federal household income, improvement, and in, drop in federal debt, i.e. drop in federal income because they're taking on deficits taking on debt which taking on deficits which increases the debt so as the government takes on more debt their income drops and guess what happens here there's interest rates and all interest payments and all that right there guess what happens household income increases look at this you can see it's just dramatic deficits lead to more interest payments which lead to less government house less government income net income is in the negative Deficits lead to interest payments, which lead to more household income. When the federal government has less interest payments, when they have more household, when they have more income, the net household income drops. It just is just that simple, man. I think there's one other one I want to show you here. Maybe not. All right, so let's keep going because I want to show you something else. Here's debt to GDP. All right, so here's household net worth down here in the blue, and then this on the right scale. Debt to GDP is on the left. 50% debt to GDP in 1989, and the household I get mosquito bugs on me, man. That's one thing I hate about living in the South. And then you can see right there, we had $49 trillion of household net worth. Fast forward up here, debt to GDP is at uh, over here, 117, what does that say over here? I can't, it's going to be hard to figure that one out. It's about 125% and household net worth is at right there, $142 trillion. $142 trillion, man. Is the debt cause? And they say, oh, like my man Richard says here, he'll say, it's going to hurt our grandkids. Wisdom, wisdom says that the government is incurring debt which will burden our children and grandchildren. Yet the data shows the households already have the funds generated by this debt as part of their current, uh, the current wealth. In 2022, the prestigious Peter J. Peterson Foundation, I've done videos on this guy, and yeah, tell me he wasn't picked uh, to be part of the... Uh, the powers that be, they argued federal borrowing crowd out new investment, yet household wealth has increased dramatically in the very period that this debt has grown most rapidly. The policies, decisions we make on spending should be informed by the data on debt and wealth, 100%. Right here, household net worth increases at a rate faster than the government net worth declines. And as an off-repeated concern that the federal debt now at $31 trillion is at the level our children and grandchildren will never be able to repay, the reality is they already have it. They already have it. But they have it by a factor of four. Four dollars for every net worth on the household to one dollar of household of government debt. It's just fact. People say the analysis ignores inflation because the analysis in the article in terms of GDP and everything already looks at uh, inflation as part of GDP. So we're taking that into account. So check this out. If you Look, you should get this book, The Paradox of Debt. I'm going to read you one part of this right here. This is very interesting. In the early 1980s, many economists made dire predictions about the likely consequences of high levels of government debt. That's what they're saying in the 1980s. In my book, Relax and Retire, I talked about this. They warned it to constrain spending, crowd out lending and investment, and lead to higher interest rates and inflation, and seriously encumber the economy. At the time, inflation had reached 14%. 
and interest rates are close to 20%. Since then, government debt has exploded. And so we have had ample opportunities to put these predictions to test. As it turns out, over this time span, interest rates have generally plummeted, not risen. Investment has remained high, not been constrained. And household net worth has risen, not shrunk. Recently, inflation in the uh, other big in the U.S. and other big seven economies has been at levels not since seen in a generation. This is largely due to supply chain issues caused by lockdowns in China and other countries to prevent the spread of the dread, dreaded coronavirus, the virus, the corona. If inflation were due to high levels of government, of course, a stupid war in Ukraine. If inflation were due to high levels of debt, then the U.S. would have frequent bouts of inflation over the last 40 years because we spent like crazy. Instead, inflation has been consistently very low. Similar patterns hold to other major economies. If history, history is any guide, inflation would decline once these special circumstances uh, abate. And check this out. This means that over time, inflation has not been particularly well correlated with increases in government debt or the money supply. In fact, we've seen the money supply decline like we haven't seen since the Great Depression just over the last two years, and yet no decrease in inflation. I mean, a little bit of decrease, but not like where they're saying it's going to be. In keeping with that, Japan's ratio of money supply to GDP increased almost 35% in the years after the global financial crisis of 2008. And yet the Japanese economy saw zero inflation for the next several years. At the same time, the U.S. money supply almost doubled and the U.S. economy averaged just 2% inflation. Go back to Japan. Pablo, in 2000, Japan's debt to GDP was 135%. And now it's twice that. But has Japan had massive hyperinflation? No. No. I mean, it's just a fact. So all these people say, oh, my goodness, the government debt's going to eat us off. And I just want to show something else to you. U.S. government debt as of April 1st of this year, 2024, can I not close this thing? Is $34.63 trillion. Who actually owns our debt? Japan is the largest holder of public U.S. government debt, owning $1.15 trillion. China ranks second. Huh? UK, Luxembourg, and Canada rounding out the top five. So Japan is the largest owner of foreign debt, and they own one thirty-fifth of all of our debt. And we're worried about them like shaking the ship. Are you crazy? The remainder is public debt. Public debt. We own our own debt. We pay ourselves the interest. China. China owns less than a trillion dollars of our debt. That's it. Show you how this works. So in 1945, we had 160 million million dollars of debt created. 156 million of that went to deposits. All right, fast forward to go to 2022. We had 14, I guess that'd be trillion dollars of debt created. I don't, yeah, I think it's trillion. Of which, well, not 20, 20, about 22 trillion dollars of debt created of which $20 trillion went to deposits. So if you do a double booking, double dual entry accounting, we have a credit and a debit. debit. We credited the account, we debited the, the, the U.S. Treasury essentially, and we credited your bank account. And people say, oh, but we got to pay that debt back. We are paying it to ourselves. We are the biggest beneficiary of the government interest rate. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In the Congressional Budget Office, and you'll see federal debt help stop it, held by the public 1974 to 2023. Pablo, I guess this would be the average right here. I'm not sure. But anyway, you can see, uh, look at this. Percentage of debt to GDP in 1975 is 20%. Uh, 19, the average held, okay, average is 48%. There we go, 48%. Okay, gotcha. Sweet. So 1975-74 is 23%. 1992 is 46%. From 2008 till now, has gone up above the average. All right, that's pretty interesting, is it not? Yes, it is. The deficits, we've had deficits every year since 1975. Let's look at 1996. 1.4, 2.2, yeah, even 19, yeah, right there. 1997, we had a deficit of 0.3%, 0.8%. And then we had surplus right there in 1998 and 2000. And 1999, we actually had surpluses. But what happened in net worth? When the debts, uh, the deficits started going up, the net worth went higher. Why? Because for the deficits, what's half that money is going into our pockets. It's just a fact, dude. I mean, you can argue this. I'd love to hear your arguments, but I mean, it's just a fact. As the net worth, as the debt, federal debt increased, the net worth exploded. That, I just, I just showed you. We showed the leveling of net worth off. I'll show you again, just so you can see. I just showed you how it worked. Let's go back to Richard's thing here. 
and you'll see right here we have a leveling of net worth of GDP. This is household net worth of GDP, flat, 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 and then boom, right when the debt started kicking in, boom, look at that. I mean, we had levels of, le I mean, just going back here, debt to GDP right here. And this is the same time the net worth is just flat. And yet, once the debt started kicking in, net worth kicked in. Anyway, I wouldn't worry. There's nothing to do about it. I mean, I'm still going to vote for politicians to cut the sides of government because a bigger government means less freedom. But I wouldn't sit up there and say, oh, my God, we'll never pay this debt off. I'm going to put all my money in gold and stuff. You know, you should just don't own some gold. Don't get me wrong. But, man, give me a break. They're never going to pay off the debt. They're always going to pay the interest. We earn the interest on this money. It's our money. They're paying it to us, and that's a good thing. All right, love your thoughts. God bless. We'll see you.